ever wonder what the beginning of everything looked like. The Genesis account describes the beginning as chaos, shaking, formless, empty, dark. It describes it as the Creator's rule or the Creator's breath or spirit, but somehow hovering over the deep seas and light came to be after day one. What is fascinating to me about this narration is that there seems to be this interconnectedness in all creation. It all seems to be transcending its boundaries as though it is all one with each other. So it is with our wisdom today. Some things are inherently everlasting. Some things are innately present at the beginning of all creation. Ancient of days existing prior to the chaos, prior to the darkness, and I submit to you that it is true of Jesus' prayer about oneness. Just as you are in me and I am in you, I pray that they also be in us. Such a fascinating mode of living, no? Living into its core eternal power, its physical, spiritual, emotional, and mental energy, drawing us closer and closer to one another, for we are made part of each other, belonging to the same Creator, part of the same body of Christ. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part gets the glory, all the parts celebrate with it. It sounds beautiful, right? It sounds lovely, even poetic, to speak about Jesus' prayer of oneness for his disciples. And yet, I wonder, why deviate from such eternal and blessed interconnectedness. Perhaps it has something to do with the misinterpretation of oneness. Oneness is not same. Here. Oneness is not same. Oneness abounds in diversity, in variance, in range. We can be one and not agree on every single thing. We can be one and still maintain our uniqueness and our distinction. We're all individuals with vastly different backgrounds and have a very different upbringing, traditions. We are informed with uh, our ethnicity, our backgrounds, our identity, our cultures. All of our languages, they all influence our understanding of oneness. Our ancestors, our, our childhood upbringings, all of it informs our oneness. Even if it's like, we'll talk about red, by the way. It's not very good, I don't know what to talk about. The red and I, we have these shared values. We have these mutual understandings. We have these shared responsibilities. Some of it is for parents. Some of it is biological. Some of it is natural. Still, if anyone knows Brenda, Brenda is very different than I. We have these different personalities. We don't always agree on everything. There seems to be one bit but not the same. Now, what's fascinating to me is that if you would ask me, what is the best credibility? What is the most, the best proof of the oneness that you're going to have? I would say to you, I see it in my children. I see it in Penelope, Ollie, Ansel, because there seems to be a little bit of Brenda, a little bit of Moses, and then there seems to be this whole lot of them and other things in the world. 
the way we think, their goals, their plans. Sometimes I see the humor. And so the kids that, that relate more to Brenda, sometimes I see the way we think and process the things that seem a little more like me. But it seems to be the best authentication, shall we say, of Brenda and I one Not saying that. And I wonder if some of you may have grandchildren, and you may see some of that same thing. That somehow the best way to authenticate that oneness that you have had is sometimes seen in our grandchildren as well. And there's other ways to see that authentication. There are many different ways that one can sort of point to your oneness with someone else, and somehow how it all blends together into this unique thing that we're called. Oneness. Now, it's fair to say we are in the kids and the kids are in us. It is ironic, though, to consider such a wisdom this morning on oneness and not saying this during a time when ancient immigrants in Springfield, Ohio are being uttered. Think about this. The false and racist frames from the former president claiming that Asians are eating dogs and cats. This characterization of immigrants, so this is, is not necessarily something new. There's a historical white supremacist narrative that goes back hundreds of years that treats black, brown, indigenous, and Asian immigrants as not the same, as not American, or somehow a threat to American establishment. Playing on the race and spheres of many, and all for political and economic gain. Now, this is sad. This is lamenting. Firstly, because it's not the Jesus way. Uttering falsehoods, creating division, perpetuating hate has harmful consequences. It really does. At least 43 bomb threats have occurred since the presidential debate in Springfield. They have to cancel cultural festivals. They have to, the universities have to, have to cancel sporting events. Some universities have moved to remote instruction due to threats. The Asian community does not feel safe. They stop sending their children to school due to fear and other kids bullying them. Even Sunday worship attendance at Asian churches has declined. One pastor said, they feel the threat, they feel not welcome. And let me say one more thing about it. Someone today probably needs to hear this. One is, is for you too. He assures you that whatever you need and whatever you may be lacking this morning, whatever is your pain, your suffering, your burden, what it says to you. You are not alone. The divine is part of you. Your siblings are part of you. You are part of us. It is in the mutuality, in the vulnerability, in the solidarity that oneness provides. So if one suffers, we all suffer. If one gets the glory, we all tell. Now, I mentioned that the credibility of Brenda and I's oneness is authenticated to our children, right? And so it is with us as children of the divine parents. So that the world will believe that you sent me with the words of Jesus. And by the way, the phrasing repeated throughout this gospel reading it is through baptism that the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer dwells in us. And every now and then, when we think, when we live, when we act, when we respond like the divine one, ever so perfectly, when it all lines up our oneness with God, neighbor, and all creation, it comes to work. Those are the ones that we are truly sent by God. That somehow visibly affirms the sacredness and holiness of the 
place of the church and its followers. It offers credibility that God is truly a part of us and we a part of God. Now, I know that we live in a world today that it's important to remember that we are gathered together as one. That this ancient wisdom, ancient, right before the creation, that this praying, that Jesus is praying for oneness, was established from the very beginning of creation. All of us are living in reality and solidarity with one another, but we can't ignore the opposition. We must address it and confront the misinterpreted and unbiblical work of evil falsehoods and this very world. The opposition is active. It is operating against one And this is why this message matters so much this morning. I love that statement, by the way, from the father of Aiden Clark. You know, the boy who was killed when an ancient, ancient immigrant driver hit a school bus about a year ago. He spoke with such boldness and such truth, imploring the former president to stop using his son as a political tool and to stop using Aiden's death as a form of hate towards immigrants. I mean, what a powerful repudiation of right? In fact, many local residents in Springfield have gathered peacefully with protests parading around the city with signs that say hate has no hold in Springfield, and many of us have showed oneness by supporting local Haitian restaurants, writing positive reviews on Yale and the world. But see, the point of all this. Oneness is not saved. When we stand in solidarity with one another, despite our differences, oneness enters the room. It is visible, attainable, possible when we can demonstrate oneness, when we can lean into the soul of being. This is what political liberation looks like. This is what it looks like to regain, reclaim politics as good as a good and sacred word. To actively engage in this shared common life together that benefits all and rearranges everything to it in conjunction with that. One of this is just the bold repudiation of political hate and division. It boldly confronts the us versus them mentality, clearly not the language of the scriptures, and clearly not the nature of the divine. One this does not leave people divine, it does not lift one racial group over another, it does not pray by the things of its world, it doesn't place things above people, and it surely does not dehumanize immigrants. Instead, one that values the human dignity, it acknowledges this ancient principle from the beginning of time, and we are part of each other, we are part of the divine, and the divine is part of us. I end with this. Jesus said, I have given them the glory, which is that, so that they can be one, just as we are one. Glory. Glory here signifies an exalted state or a condition. The same glory that raised Christ from the grave, the same condition prior to his incarnation or becoming human, set before the beginning of the world. So this is to say that Jesus gave his disciples his resurrection. Power. So to become one. From death to life. From sameness to one. And here we are, thousands of years later, and one is has overcome the same. We are the living testimony of such a statement. We have the glory as well, the resurrection in us that will aid us in our oneness. For the resurrection of Jesus is somehow losing God's reign into the world, it's somehow summoning God's reign into completion. Thus, the already pleasing and reconciling of the entire universe being renewed, being repaired, being put back together. 
and it will be in our abiding and giving the time of the and we will be suffering one day in our sameness, liberation, and our perfection, truth, and our falsehood. For resurrection is inherently liberation. So we go where liberation, where resurrection is given to happen. We go to work where healing is already occurring. We give and volunteer and participate where the things are being made new. We forward and reconcile. This will only affirm the ancient beauty of oneness already in making within us. It is true, oh so true, that we are part of each other. Part of the divine, and the divine is part of us. Word of God and word of life, and we all say, Thanks be.